Hello, and welcome to Driver Suit Blog Radio Storytime. Now, unlike the last three entries, these are all new, freshly recorded for the podcast, and this week's episode will focus on three, yes, three stories. And these are all stories from my personal life. I'm not getting them off Reddit or anything. Now, we're going to start with a dumb roommate argument. Now, if you're living on campus in college or you live near college in an apartment, you're likely to have a roommate more often than not. Uh, sometimes you'll get someone you like, Some other times you'll have issues with them. But this story goes back to 2001, 2002, my sophomore year of college, and I had a guy who I was able to work with as a roommate. Now, for the purposes of the story, I will be changing his name to Earl. Now, Earl was a decent enough guy, and we got along pretty well, but we only had one real complete blowout. Uh, and this is one of the dumbest arguments that I've ever, I have ever been a part of. I take no blame for it either. The whole debacle started over an Outcast CD. Uh, specifically, I purchased a copy of Speaker Box The Love Below uh, maybe a couple weeks prior, and as happens sometimes, you misplace it. I misplaced the CD. Happens all the time. So I looked for it and I couldn't find it. And now I have the irresistible urge to quote George Carlin, so I have to say this quote. I lost my yo-yo. Well, where did you have it last? Hey, if I knew that, I would still have my yo-yo. Well, it must be somewhere, right? Well, it just didn't get up and walk away. Yeah, I had to quote George Carlin. Why wouldn't you? So after looking for the CD with no luck whatsoever, Earl comes back from class, and literally this is what I ask him. I say, hey, uh, Earl, have you seen my Outcast CD? I can't remember where I left it. Okay, D- does anyone here think that that's a reasonable question? Well, that was the wrong thing to say, because Earl proceeded to lose his goddamn mind and flipped out and snapped at me. And he was doing this because he genuinely believed I was accusing him of theft. Like, how? How? I literally asked him, I said, I misplaced my CD, have you seen it? How, what part of that sentence could be interpreted as, I'm accusing you of theft? Someone explain this to me. I never accused him of theft. I didn't accuse him directly or indirectly. I didn't even suspect that he had stolen it. If he had borrowed it, I wouldn't have even had a problem with that. Just say, hey, uh, let me know next time. I would have, I had nothing. I had no reason to accuse him of anything. And he freaks out and curses me top to bottom because I'm accusing him of theft in his own mind. He yelled, screamed, cursed me out. And I'm just sitting there generally confused and reiterating that, no, I'm not saying you stole it. I'm saying, have you seen it? Because I misplaced it. I wasn't accusing him of anything. And this lasted like 10 minutes, and then he stormed out. And I'm just sitting there, like, looking at the door like, are you fucking for real? Like, what did I, what happened? So fast forward two hours. Uh, it was at the bottom. The CD was at the bottom of my backpack. By the way, I'd I'd found it by then. Um, Earl comes back, and all I can do is when he comes and just look at him and say, "Earl, what the fuck?" Now Earl, by this point, to his credit, has calmed down considerably. Uh, he apologized and said that he there was like other issues that were playing on his mind and. He had something else going on in his life, which, you know, okay. He, as a, um, as a uh, peace offering, he had purchased some Sambuca, which we shared, and the incident was forgotten. And it sucks. I, I haven't seen Earl since the year ended, which sucks because I did like the guy. He is a, he was a really cool guy. I hope he's doing well because he, he's a really nice guy. It was so. The first story was a bit short, but. We're going to have a late night uh, story next. I'll be right back.
Welcome back. Uh, this was a script I'd written some time ago, but I never actually got around to making the video. So I will tell this story of a random late night encounter. I'll tell it right here, right now. Um, so at the time of writing, State Farm was featuring a series of commercials where their titular character, Jake, is getting various extras from people who were thankful for their quote unquote special treatment, even though everyone was getting the exact same deals. Now, one of these commercials is called Maya Markdown. iSpot.tv describes the commercial as such. Quote, Jake from State Farm is at Longhorn Meat Market and is surprised to get several extra cuts of meat because the associate in question believes he did her a favor by giving her the Maya Markdown on her insurance. While Jake is trying to tell everyone that everyone gets great rates, Maya doesn't believe him and keeps and promises to keep this meaty secret between the two of them. By the way, I love the term meaty secret. I just love that term. So, whenever I would watch this commercial, Maya herself seemed very familiar. And I'm not talking in like, oh, I've seen this actress somewhere. Because her actress, Kate Rogel, is, is similar age to me, but I've never met her at all. I've never been in the same room with her. But I, I swear that I've dealt with someone who looks exactly like her at some point in my life. And it was bothering me, and I was thinking about it, and then it unlocked a memory. And then it made it all made sense. So my senior year of college, I was living in what was considered a fratless frat house. It was like all the drinking, partying, and stupidity of a frat house with no actual frat in it. We didn't have a frat, but we sure partied like one. Well, sometimes when you are overindulging in beer and bucket punch, you get hungry. Now, this tends to happen in the very early hours of the morning, and most respectable food places are closed, save for your Denny's, your 24-hour diners, your McDonald's. So we decide, we're gonna go to McDonald's. We go to McDonald's, and as we're waiting in line to order, a woman who was a dead ringer for Maya Markdown comes in. And she's one of these, uh, I'm better than you and you know it vegans. The, the kind of people who, they just love making life miserable if you don't follow their exact line of thought. And we're, leaning, we're in line to order and she comes in and she starts berating all of us for being disgusting murderers because we eat meat. Going vegan is the only way to go, blah, blah, blah. We've heard it all before. You're not impressing anybody and your point doesn't get across. So the employees who thankfully weren't having this shit at all, order her to leave. Well, Queen Vegan was not gonna back down here and she's pulling the whole, well, this is a public place. I don't have to leave if I don't want to card, which that's beyond uninformed to say the least. She was told that this is private property and she would be leaving in handcuffs if she didn't leave willingly. Well, she's not leaving and the cops get called. As soon as the cops come in, this delusional narcissist is screaming that we should be arrested for uh, murder and animal cruelty because we're eating meat. The, the, the cops are just not buying her story at all and she's placed in cuffs screaming, crying, and dragged out of McDonald's, much to the cheering and uh, whistles of all the patrons, because we didn't want her there and we're glad she's gone. But here's the, the kicker. Why did you pick that particular time to stage her protest? I'm sorry, but a McDonald's at 1 a.m. is not filled with rational thinkers. Most were either drunk, high, or both, and they don't care about what moral high ground you think you had. Your protest failed, you went to jail, and everybody in the restaurant is laughing at you. Good job, everyone. Good job, Queen Vegan. Golf clap. Look, I don't care if you're vegan. I really don't. But if you're the kind of vegan who uses her, your beliefs to have high ground over me, I don't waste my time on you. 
block you on social media, and I forget that you exist. And there's a lot of other people who think that way too. And I know a lot of vegans in my life who aren't these publicly judgmental assholes. But they, they don't get to matter because the judgmental assholes are the loudest. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Now I'm going to go to my final break and I'll discuss why I don't do team building exercises. So our final story concerns team building exercises and I think we can all agree that they suck pond water. I've had some times where I've been asked if I wanted to do some since it might quote unquote help advance my career but I'm not interested in career advancement at this point in my life so I've said no. But what really forced me to stop was one day in the summer of 1995 where I had a very bad team building exercise experience. Uh, it was the summer of 95. I was in middle school and it was spring break. Now at the time I went to a YMCA day camp instead of a uh, sleepaway camp because I can be miserable at home. I don't need to spend three months in the woods to be more miserable than I already am. So I went to a YMCA camp called Summer Adventure Club where we pretty much went on like field trips and stuff every single day. Uh, some were more fun than others, some weren't fun at all, but this one was really odd for a number of reasons. Uh, one particular day, our leaders decided to take us to a uh, youth counselor so that we could do team building exercises. Now already this seems like an odd move for a summer camp, but it was even more so because it was towards the end of summer and we weren't going to be a group for much longer. Now if you were going to do something like this, wouldn't you have done this at the beginning of the summer so that we could learn how to coexist as a group early on? And I also knew that this was going to be uh, not a fun event because we were told to wear, quote, old clothes, which is always a bad sign. Uh, if you're being told to wear clothes that you can destroy without any real loss, Whatever activity you're going to be doing is not going to be fun. Well, we get to this place and it's it consists of an office building which is designed to look like a house for whatever reason, even though there is a giant youth counselor sign in front of it. And behind the house is a very large outdoor area with a lot of playground looking equipment where we did these team building exercises on. And I will say that it actually was going very smooth until we get to the final exercise. Now you need to understand that when you look at the equipment in this place, every single piece of equipment, you could tell it was there and it was easy to decipher what we were supposed to be doing with it. And it was pretty self-explanatory with the exception of one piece of equipment that is completely out of place in this respect. Now picture an eight foot long, I don't know, it's an eight foot long concrete sewer pipe. Now it's big enough for two average sized people to fit in. It's at least eight feet long and it's on the ground covered, completely covered in amount of dirt with only the openings accessible. So the counselor gathers us around this concrete pipe and we get told what we're supposed to be doing here. Now, as I said before, it's, big enough to fit two normal sized people and that's what that's the point two people are going to crawl into either end of this pipe and when they meet in the middle one will have to crawl over to the other so that both can get to the exit now as I said it's big enough for two average sized people operative word here average sized many of us were what could be considered above average sized people and also, this is not a short pipe. This thing is at least eight feet long. So there's no way to, to just 
it's not like a four foot pipe where getting stuck might not be it might be more manageable this is like your entire body can fit into this thing and the other person's entire body can fit into this thing so they explain all of the rules and the procedures and they ask if we have any questions so being who i am i raised my head and i ask okay if we get stuck in the pipe what's the procedure which for the larger people is a concern i don't really want to get stuck in a concrete pipe if i can possibly avoid it um the response i got stunned everyone It hasn't, the answer I get is basically, well, it hasn't happened yet, and it's not going to be an issue. Wait, 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 what? What? Yes, I ask a very real safety question that not only applies to me, but directly applies to everyone else in the group. And I get the uh, response, well, it hasn't happened yet, and it's not, it's not going to be an issue. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it is never a good thing for safety. Like, if you're doing a tandem skydiving jump, and um, the, the, the professional is being, is, uh, you're, and the professional are being strapped in, and you ask the guy, hey, what happens if the primary chute gets opened and gets tangled? And the, the guy you're strapped to says, ah, it's not happened yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. I don't know about you, but I am not getting on that plane. So I ask the question again, I get the same answer again. Now at this point they start picking groups and I just say, nope, no, 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 not happening. And when the counselor uh, asks why I'm not participating, I said, look, the, the thing I'm concerned with because of my size is getting stuck. Um, I don't want to take that chance, especially when there is absolutely no safety protocol for if that happens. Which is frankly the only safety concern this thing has. If this was a like a PVC pipe that was like that was like on a on the ground, but it had a hinge so that if something did happen, you could just open it up and it would solve the problems. I would be I would I wouldn't have had a pro problem with it. I'm claustrophobic, I do admit, but when there's nothing in terms of safety, go f yourself. I'm I'm not I'm not wasting my time on this. So, a lot of the other larger people who were kind of threat, kind of uh, trepidatious about this, as soon as I said, well, if there's no safety protocol, I'm not climbing in that pipe, they were like, okay, we're not going in either. And I think the, the counselors there were pissed, but um, the, the, the leaders of our group weren't, because I get pulled aside after the whole thing ended, and she was mad, but she couldn't blame me or anyone else because the lack of safe, like not even a plan in case it could happen. But if we had gotten stuck, and remember, this is a this is like at least a two or three inch thick concrete pipe. It's, it's buried in dirt. Even if you called the fire department, it's gonna take them a while to chop you out of there. That 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 was my primary concern. And I, after walking away from this, I made a mental note, I am never doing team building exercises if I can avoid it again. And I've avoided team building exercises whenever I could. I don't get them anyway. They're a waste of time, money, effort, and resources. And to a lot of groups, they really don't add anything, but they subtract a lot. And with that, my summer break officially comes to an end. Normal, op normal operations will resume next week. I'm Dave Farsley, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you then.